So, how was it like performing with NXZ last night? It was awesome. It was really cool to um, to play like a warm up show before the festival. It wasn't really a warm up show. It was like I was going to say seven. you have quite the notion of a warm up show. Yeah, it was like it was huge, and but it was still nice to kind of like have a chance to play a full headlining show. You know, because like the festival, you can't play as the full set with all the songs. So that was really cool, and to have the chance to do it with one of the most awesome, biggest band from Brazil in our style of music. That was really special, and the fact that we were able to do like to have them, you know, come out and sing "I'm Just a Kid" with us. That was even more special. It felt like we we hadn't we hadn't met them personally before that, like in person, you know. But the fact that we got to do this, it feels like we're already like close friends because we got to play music together. So that makes a huge difference. It connects you, right? So that was really special. I really enjoyed it. Jeff, do you want to say something? I, I mean, I couldn't have put it a better way. I was just like, yesterday was just amazing, it was just sick, you know, obviously having such a great band, you know, perform with us was wonderful. Um, I, I, I love Brazil so much and coming back every time is just such a gift. And yesterday the energy was just insane. It's the best show, I was going to say a whole year, but it was the best show I think that we've played like since the pandemic. You've said that, right? But I, you know, I think it was, it was really amazing. Every time we come here, it's like this magic happens and it's, um, we love it. I'm sorry, I'm pretty chill. I'm still on real time. I took a <laughs> holiday in Rio and I'm like, yeah, baby, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you decide to play Mamonas Assassinas? Ah, the Brazilian song. We, we wanted to do something that uh, would be a bit special, you know, being here. Like, we wanted to, you know, like we have some friends here and they were like showing us some of the songs, some of the music that's really iconic and famous here. And we were like, and they were like, if you play, people will sing and we'll, I'm like, are you sure? Like, yeah, 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 I'm telling you, it's so massive here. So it was kind of a way to show that our appreciation for uh, like the local music and local culture and kind of show that, we, you know, like we make the effort to obviously try to grasp a little bit what the music scene here is in Brazil, you know, and um, to kind of be a part of the culture, you know, and try to pay homage to the people that have been before us and that are massive here. So it was just a, like a, a kind of like a wink, you know, like a way to say like, hey, we know this song, you know, and so I think it went off amazing. People were singing the whole thing. It was wild. Chuck told me like, right, he texted me right before I took my flight from Rio to Sao Paulo, right? And he's like, you got to learn this song. I'm like, what is this? I don't know. So I'm on the flight. I'm learning the track just in case we decide to play it. And then I'm like, you sure this gonna work? Like, this is just so random. Like, I don't know this song, right? It was great that it actually worked. So I started playing it on stage. I'm like, this is not gonna go over well. You know, but as soon as we got into like the bigger part of the riff, everybody started singing and it was crazy. So I'm like, thank God, Chuck, you got it right. <laughs> you know. And are you looking forward to watching some other artists today? Yeah, 100%. Uh, there's so many great bands. Who are you looking for? I want to see All Time Low for sure. Um, the Rejects are here today, right? All American Rejects. That's that's the big one for me. I haven't seen them. Well, actually, it's not true. I saw them last summer, but it's their first time in Brazil, which is wild. Like we've, you know, I'm so surprised they haven't been here before. So I think the reaction is going to be crazy. Um, NX Zero, of course. I want to see them see the in front of their crowd. You know, their hometown crowd. Uh, Fresno, I mean, we're gonna miss them tonight, but for the rest of the festival, like, I want to see them. I love it. They're really, uh, really cool voice and um, really amazing melodies. Like, very, I don't know, it feels like a really core emo Brazilian band. Like, they were part of the scene for so long. So, I want to see that. And we have a lot of friends too. Made Parade, we just did five weeks with them in Europe. Playing White Tees, we go way back. Like, I think our first tour together was 2004. So, it's cool. It's a great lineup. Boys like girls too. We're going to Australia with them next month, so it's a lot of really good band. Yeah. I mean, as I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the Rejects the most. But you know, these are all friends of ours. You know, so I'm looking forward to hanging out with the Plain White Peas, very good friends. Um, but the Rejects, I haven't seen them very. I missed them uh, on that summer tour. Mm -hmm. I didn't see them. You went. I was running on that on that day. Marcus. Yeah. The you. The you. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's gonna be fun. I'm going to speak with the youth soon. Oh, awesome. Say hi for us. 
Okay, do you want to make a question? Hmm, what question could we ask the youth? I don't know. Um, I would ask them like, how are they so fucking awesome? <laughs> like all these songs that they write, like <laughs> that are like, that connected so deeply with people. Like you go see the youth show and like you could tell like people are believers, like they're in the crowd. So I guess my question is like, what, how does it feel to play these songs? And to really see that, like the impact on people's like faces, like you can tell that this song, like maybe saved somebody's life, or like do they feel kind of pressure to be that kind of band, you know, to have that such crazy emotional connection with their fans? So I don't know. Okay. I think it's cool. I, I really admire that in them, you know. I'm going to send the message. <laughs> Uh, it's been more than two decades since the release of your first album. The lyrics of your songs, however, continue to speak with young people and at the same time, there are many fans that grow up with you. How is like getting older and still making music? I think... Oh, I'm gonna let Jeff answer that. Oh yeah, because I'm the <laughs> oldest in the band. <laughs> um, I think it's beautiful right now what's going on with the band. You know, obviously, a lot of people are celebrating great moments in their lives, you know, that we were the soundtrack to, you know, first kisses, first boyfriend, first girlfriend, first whatever, you know, weddings, you know, anniversaries. So I think that's a beautiful thing, you know, so it's a it's a great nostalgia trip for a lot of people. They come to the shows and they're reminded of, of great things that happened in their life. So I think that's beautiful. But I think the most beautiful thing that's happening in this time and age right now is that a lot of new people are connecting with our music through playlists, through I don't know what, but they hear about Simple Plan, TikTok, whatever it is, and uh, they feel very welcome, you know, to the shows. And uh, there's, I, I love the fact that now it's so free and, 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 you know, open to all genres of people. You know, I think it was when we started out, you had to be a certain way to be part of that emo punk scene. Now it doesn't matter, you know, whatever your background is, wherever, you know, socially, whatever you, wherever you hang out, you're welcome. And you see it at the shows. Yesterday, I was blown away. Very young people next to, you know, people that have been there for 20, 25 years, you know, listening to Simple Plan. To me, that's just beautiful. That's magical. I'm, I don't think I've seen that in the bands that I grew up with, you know? Like, when, you know, back in the day, you would see Guns N' Roses and it was just, you know, that crowd, you know? But now you see parents going with their kids. You see new, newbies coming in. You see, you know, the old school fans. So I think it's really, really, really great. I lost your question, but that was just my point. I thought it was just really, really cool. Yeah, I thought it was really cool to see how diverse. I thought it was really cool to see how diverse the crowd was. There was people from all origins, people from all backgrounds, people from all kinds of identities. And, you know, I think is that was special to see like so many different cultures being in that crowd. And I think that as a as a band, it's cool to see our music is reaching all these people. But to answer your question, <laughs> how does it feel to 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 you know get older and and oh, and, and, and be in a band? <laughs> I'm gonna say that I think it's I think we've more than ever we realize how much of a privilege it is to still be doing this 25 years later. You know, since we started the band, as we get older, I think we realize just how precious what we were able to build is and how much we want to protect it and we want to keep going like I, it's it's almost like we at least I had the um, reflection is like why would we ever want to stop playing I mean until we're physically able to, to do it why would we want to stop this we get to travel the world we get to play in front of people that are deeply invested in what we created musically and with the band like the whole sort of the whole scene that, that we represent and um, it's a magic like it's it's we're so so lucky I've had that. fans you know like now that I remember your question <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's funny because I think it's more about like the way you feel it you know like when I was younger I just I, I, it was crazy it was fast it was a tornado and I just didn't really take the time to appreciate it and now I think I'm more grateful um, fans have been telling me like you walk on stage and you got the biggest smile. I'm like, pinch me. How the hell are we still doing this? And I just take it in, you know, there's so much beautiful energy, fans smiling back and 
And I love the fact that, you know, like, sometimes I have to remind myself, oh shit, you gotta stop smiling like an idiot. You gotta look the part, you know, and just, you know, try to, you know, to, to, to play the show. But I'm just really, really happy to be there. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, perfect was like a message for your parents at the time, right? And uh, do you feel like Simple Plan is at the place that you wish it so many years ago? Uh, I think we're getting there. Um, I think we always had the ambition to be a band that could, you know, reach people and connect with them in a very deep and personal way. I think songs like Perfect really help create that, that bond between our music and the fans. I think because it was such a personal song that we wrote at the time, like about trying to explain to our parents that we had this dream, this vision of being in a band. And they were very supportive of all that but they just didn't understand that it could be your 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 work like your you know your your full-time job and i understand why they couldn't see that because it's hard to imagine that it's possible it's only like 0.001 percent of the bands that get to this level and we're so grateful but so we try to tell them in the most honest and heartfelt way like how we felt and how how difficult it was to not be on the same page, right? And like see see things a different way. And we felt the song was so personal that it, most people would not get it. Like that it wouldn't, that it was kind of like a personal song just for us. And that we, we were not really sure it would connect. But what turned out to be really ironic and really funny is that the more, the, the most, the more personal you go, the more honest you are with a story and a song, the more it connects with people because People take that and it, it, they see that it's genuine, it's real, it's honest, it's heartfelt. And then they they take the words and they apply it to their own lives. And that song has become a real anthem for so many people. And uh, you see it every night when we play, like in the front row, you see people crying and um, having tattoos and all that. And um, I think it's a, the song, a song that profoundly changed our career. I think if we didn't have that song on the first record, maybe we're just a fun band that people like. And But that song changed the course of our career because it sort of said like, there's more to this band, there's more substance there, you know, and that connection was really created with that song. Uh, so I'm really proud of it. And it's, uh, I feel like it's a highlight of every show for us, you know? Jeff, do you want to say something? I mean, that song is very important to me because I was playing with Chuck and Pierre like when we were like 12, 13, 14 years old. And my dad was like, you can't keep on doing this. You know, you can't be in a band. It's not serious. You have to learn music the proper way. You have to study. And to me, those were not mutually exclusive things. But to him, like he felt that, you know, putting control over me was the right way to make sure that I wasn't going to be sad and, and poor and unhappy in life. But he was wrong, you know, like I think when you got someone very driven towards a passion of theirs, I think it's important that you allow that space to be there. But now it's interesting because I play the shows and I think about my dad a lot during that song. And uh, I don't know, he's probably not on a cloud or I don't know what form it is. You know, spirituality is very complex, but I know that he's he's proud. I think he's there. You know, I, I have a feeling I have a strong sense that, you know, he's like, Yeah, you know what? You did pretty good, little boy, you know? And so life is very, very interesting. I went back to music school. I went studying classical music. And then I kind of fought back to being in a band, you know, called Chuck Up. We, we got Sebastian in and then Pierre back into the band. And then it became Simple Plan. You know, it's, it's funny. It's almost as if that thing needed to happen whether you know people were trying to put obstacles on our way it was there to happen so it's uh it's an important song and and people tell me a lot uh, you know they have the same that story repeats itself it's ongoing every generation you know every time uh, every era it happens parents parents are just trying to make sure that their kids are okay but well, now you understand a little bit more when you have kids, right? It's kind of like, I get it. I get where they're coming from. But it's still not the right way to do it. You're gonna do it your, like, we're going to do it in a different way because we have a different life experience. Like We've had the, the luck of doing this and it worked out for us. And 
and we can see that yes passion and like if it's in your heart and you really believe in it like you have to follow that you know and i think that at the time maybe it just wasn't a possible it wasn't even a possibility for well, no our parents, parents. Really done it before, and like, quebec was from where we're from yeah people hadn't done it you know singing in english was almost like a political statement where we were at you know because people spoke french and there's a very nationalistic movement anyways we're not going to get into that <laughs> very complex but it, it was it was a statement you know putting together a rock band in english was a statement so it parents, was a long shot it was a long shot our parents didn't think it was going to happen and what is your favorite song from hard and danny looks ah the new record i don't know man it's i think it's the honestly the best collection of song we've ever put out like in terms of the songwriting the arrangement the sound like everything it just came out so good and i'm so proud of it but if i had to pick one oh man i think i would pick the one that i feel is the most impactful is like iconic i love just badass but the one that i feel like oh in my personal taste like that i really love it's like slow motion i was gonna say yeah. that could be like a perfect pop song but with you know the simple plan flavor to it i think it's so well written so well arranged that yeah i like it a lot too when we play that song you know you got the intro come in on stage like everybody's like holy shit something's gonna happen <laughs> and the song pops so it's really cool <laughs> um where does the album title come from uh, Very stupid places, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> well, we were trying to come up with something funny, so there's a little bit of a pun going on. But then actually, if you, if you take out that layer and you think about the actual meaning of what it, what, why we want to title that, it comes from the idea of being in a band. I think that um, to be in a band for 25 years, to keep putting out music, to keep touring when you have families and kids, like it's actually is harder than it looks. People from the outside might assume, like, oh yeah, it's. You know, it's it's so much fun. All they do is party and play shows. But there's a, so much more that goes on. Uh, you know, if you want to keep reaching for new goals and be ambitious and try to accomplish new things, uh, and also just try to keep the band together, all the personalities and the friendship and the friendship evolves and changes, right? Because it's not just friend. There's a there's work. So and there's you know there's as you get older you have all these obligations with work but you also have the family so you have to balance all that out and it's difficult it's it's challenging and i think that the reason why we're still together is because we're willing to do that hard work we're willing to talk like communicate together when somebody is not happy about something instead of just being like ah oh, fuck him we sit down and we say hey Let's work it out. Let's repair whatever's not right, you know? So I think that's where, that was the idea behind uh, more than just a joke, you know, like connotation <laughs> but of the, the album title. Um, how did you decide to include Scooby Doo's theme song in the set list? At first, we were like, nah, we shouldn't play that song, you know? <laughs> and we kind of tested it out, you know, in certain places, and people were going crazy. So, I mean, you have to embrace your history at some point. <laughs> and, 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 and again, there was a certain time in the band where it would have been wrong to do it, you know? Like, it just wasn't, the scene wasn't tolerant towards these kind of little gimmicky ideas, funnier things. Although we always, in, you know, had like little medleys of pop songs, you know? Like, we, we played some hip hop songs during our set and we always allowed, you know, crazier things, you know, to happen. But at some point we were like, let's embrace our history. Whatever we did, you know, let's be proud of it and let's celebrate that with our fans. And people have been responding amazingly well. <laughs> Now people dress up as Scooby-Doo because they know it's a way to get on stage and dance with us, you know? So I'm like, I'm, the more the merrier. It's just so amazing. And for me, it's a highlight of the show, really, because like it shows that we're building this, this community of people that like maybe grew up when they were like nine, 10 years old, they were watching that. And now like it started to happen on TikTok. It got huge, like all this viral. People were saying like, Simple Plan didn't go, like like Simple Plan didn't have to go that hard on that, you know, Scooby-Doo theme song. And it's like, and it become like this viral thing. And we, like Jeff said, we, instead of being like, oh, I don't know if it's cool or not. Like we embrace it. We think it's really fucking cool that we were in Scooby-Doo yes. and that we're an episode <laughs> and I can show it to my kid and say, look, 
it's it's papa there you know on, <laughs> on, on the screen like that's i think that's cool and it seems like a lot of people seem to agree and then you have all these people that are coming to the shows now like jeff was saying like are dressing up it creates this whole like excitement it creates this there's a culture like there's like people like you don't get it unless you're a simple plant fan <laughs> i think that's that's amazing we have an interesting thing going on now where dads right and i sheltered my kids a lot from the band you know like when we were walking in the streets and people would recognize me i would tell my daughters for the longest time they just never seen a bald guy before <laughs> you know so they're taking a picture with a bald guy and they believed me when they were younger right <laughs> uh, until a point obviously but my daughters clicked like that i was in a band and a famous band um with new york minute it was on TV, you know, because it passes on TV nonstop, right? <laughs> so at some point, my, my daughters are watching the movie and they're like, Dad, you're, you're in the movie there? Is that you really? I'm like, yeah. So then, you know, it clicked for them. So in, in reference to what you were saying, we are embracing every part of, of our career now. And, um, you know, we're, we're playing, you know, a little medley in the set where we're, we're doing like grow up and we're playing vacation from that movie you know so now we have so many little things to celebrate that we have to package it up <laughs> and make sure that it's short enough to fit into the set but i think it's uh, beautiful moments in our career and and now we're really proud of it always have been but it's the right moment now and how did that happen how did simple plan ended up recording what's new scooby do? Um, it was it was a long time ago. It was 2002 or three, and uh, I guess they were looking for a band that would do it for cheap, not a lot of money, <laughs> pretty much for right free. Here. And <laughs> we were a very unknown at the time. Like no nobody really knew who we were. It was still like the beginning beginning of the band, and we were like, "You want to be in a cartoon that's like known all over all over the world, and you know, play the theme song, and this might keep playing for 25 years, 30 years, 50 years, you know." And we were like, yeah, we want to do that, 100%. And the we just did it. The best part was being animated, you know, like in the show. Yeah. And uh, some of us barely spoke English back then. So we had to say these lines, right? And they would, they would be like, why can't you just say, you know, <laughs> like that simple line? We had to repeat, we're just not actors, right? So we had to repeat like quite often the lines and we had people like beating us, you know, the proper pronunciation. It was very early on in the career. We were just babies, you know, so it's crazy that it's still going on. <laughs> uh, some people thought that emo was dying. I want to be sure proves that this is not true. Did you think that emo really was dying? Did, did we think what, sorry? Emo. Emo was dying? Yeah. I think that any style of music, you have ups and downs. You have moments where it's like the peak, it starts and it's extremely popular. And then like people, it dies off a little bit and you have these sort of, these moments where you wonder like, oh, okay, like, is it over? Like, but I think that people have been saying that about pop punk and emo since we started out. I remember when we first came out, people were like, you better hurry up. This style of music's going away. You know, make sure you get your album out, your first album out. And I don't know, I always felt like the music has an energy and honesty that's really genuine and that people respond to. Every generation seems to like that, like, there's an anti-authority, there's a kind of irreverent feeling to the music. And there's also a very emotional, like, aspect of the music. So it comes and goes, but now people that used to love it when they were teenagers are getting into their late 20s, 30s. So, you know, they got jobs, they got kids, and life is probably a bit more complicated than they assume. So there's something comforting about going back and listening to the music that really shaped you as a teenager, as a as a young person. And I think that's natural. I do it with the bands that I grew up loving. It's there's it feels like home. It feels like this is where. I mean, it feels like it. There's a just a, it's comfortable. It feels natural, you know. And I think people are doing that now with our bands, with all the the bands of that scene. Like they're coming back to it, and um, I think it's amazing. And now, after a bit of a of a down, the scene is just resurging, and there's this excitement again, and new people are coming in, and um, and it's awesome. And as a band, when you stick around, that happens. If you get through the tough times, 
then boom, you start to have this like this whole new chapter. And I think we're just entering that now and it's pretty cool. I think what's healthy about the scene right now is it's more about the music than it is about a haircut and about, you know, a clothing style. I had a look take with that genre like early on, like, you know, like I just didn't understand how you, I loved all those bands, you know, I loved the music, but I just didn't really want to dress a certain way or didn't really want to like, I just didn't really do it for me, you know? So now it's about like celebrating the songs, the bands, you know? And I see people like, you know, super hipsterish, you know, dressed up cool and, <laughs> and, and, and still enjoying the music, you know? But back then it was about like, you had the goths in school, you had the hip hoppers, you got the metal heads, and it just wouldn't really mesh, you know? Now you see groups of friends that are just very different from one another, and that's healthy to me, you know? So I think the reason why this genre is doing so well right now is the, the, the emphasis is back on the music and not so much on a haircut, you know? So I, I, I think it's really, really cool. And you just have an issue with the hair thing, huh? <laughs> God, it pisses me off. It, it always did. No, but, but jokes aside, I think it's really, really about the song. You know, those songs are, as Chuck said, emotional. You know, they're, 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 uh, they, they, you know, they're driven, they're, there's energy, there's, so it connects, you know, like, and, because there, there's a trend nowadays of listening to music in the background. I call it wine tasted music, you know, where you're, you're having friends, you're having dinner, and then you play, you know, the hipster stuff in the background. But we didn't grow up to that. We were listening, you know, actively, intensely, yeah. intensively like actively to the music. And I think that's what people are relating to. Those songs you have to invest yourself into. To really really good um there is a fan outside who wants to know if you are going to bring simple Plan foundation here to brazil or something and she wants wants to give you this from oh. her own foundation okay cool <laughs> yeah um, the foundation is part of the the fabric of this band the dna of the band that we, we started in 2005 and it's been a big part of what we do. Every single headline show that we do, so last night, the show in Sao Paulo, there's $1 or the equivalent in local currency that goes to the foundation. So everywhere we go around the world, people without even realizing are kind of contributing to to the project that we have to help young people in need. So I think it's really cool. So in, in some ways it is already here. Like every time we come here, we do that. Uh, it would be cool to try to do initiatives that help people around the world. Right now we're focusing a bit more on, on our home our like hometown and home province of Quebec and, and Canada. Um, but there's nothing, you know, it would be great to be able to do more around the world. So yeah, something that we can think about for sure. Yeah. Jeff, do you want to? I was just going to say, you know, the pandemic hit us hard as a band, but it hit the foundation quite hard as well, because obviously, you know, we're funding a lot of the operations of the foundation through ticket sales, right? So um, I think it's time that we, you know, we start really kind of like putting more energy towards it. Um, it was it took a lot of energy to get yeah. the band back on the road and, and just, you know, like, it was just really difficult, you know, honestly. So um, I think it's the right time now to start focusing back on that. Uh, and do you want to send a message to the people who are going to watch our concert today? Sure. I think, um, like we always say, like, there's such a special connection with, with Brazil uh, and Simple Plan. Um, it's our 20th year coming here and playing show. I think it's our 10th time uh, touring the country. Every single time has been magical. So we just want to say a brigado for all the support. We see you on social media. We see you at every show around the world. There's always somebody with a Brazilian flag representing. Come to Brazil, Come to Brazil with the sign, the flag, the t-shirts. Um, and we notice it and we appreciate it and we're so grateful. So. Let's raise our fists, let's scream our, uh, our hearts out, let's have a really great time tonight, it's going to be a blast. I'm looking forward to it, I'm very excited. <laughs> See you on the ammo, Brazil. And finally, can I take a picture with you? Yes. <laughs> e, it's going to be tough. <laughs> okay.